can she fit through the door? Yes. Amazing Jane. Whoops. Get the, the phone and the book yep. and all that out. Oops. These are stuck. You've got to find out what you're talking about here. That's what I was trying to do. Okay, ready? Act two. Here we go. Introduce some new people. Now we are at the, in the living room of a suite at the Book Cadillac Hotel in Detroit. You know what the kind of split a politician takes? That's silly. We have two bedrooms here. You like that. That's <laughs> Right. You don't have to tell them how. Just go after it, hammer and tongs. You swing that district, and we'll get you that veterans' hospital. <laughs> Good night, Jim. Good night, boss. The story of the play is that the the Republican Party is looking for a candidate to run for president for the 1948 election. Franklin Roosevelt has just been elected to his fourth term in 1944. It's time for the Republicans to get serious about stuff. So, uh, so. Kay Thorndike, who, who is the editor of a newspaper, has, is having an affair with Grant Matthews, this man of industry. He makes airplanes. And Kay has convinced Jim Conover, the Republican Party boss, to look at Grant Matthews as a potential candidate for president. The party's best chance in 48 is to put up a candidate who's never been identified with politics. Look what happened in 40. If the election had been held a month after Philadelphia, Wilkie would have won. Yes. I'm worried about what's happening in this country. We're splitting apart. Business, labor, farmers, cattlemen, lumbermen, they're all trying to get the biggest bite of the apple. We talk about the war being over. Well, we got a war on here at home now. A civil war, an economic war. That's what I said in Cleveland. That's why I'm surprised you asked me down there. Why were you surprised? Because you politicians are trying to make capital out of this situation. So the story arc of this play is um, the Republican Party boss is vetting Matthews wants to see if the people will embrace Matthews as a candidate and if Matthews knows how to behave as a candidate, which means will he obey him, will he do what he wants him to do and say what he wants him to say rather than be his own man. And unfortunately Matthews is his own man. Right now I'm thinking about the country as a whole. I'm scared. Man. About being president. No, about what's happening to the country. It's breaking up again. What do you think you can do about it? I think somebody can appeal to what's best in people instead of what's worse. And still be in politics. <laughs> So, that's what happens. Grant goes on tour across the country making speeches at his airplane plants with his estranged wife, Mary, while the backdoor people in the Republican Party are trying to groom Grant to change his words slightly and change his positions just a little bit to make him more viable to become President of the United States. Drew Frodal, and I'm the production manager and technical director for Promscott Theater. I think it's different than anything we've ever done before as far as a set. It's a set with 14 and a half foot tall walls that move and rotate and change. And I love the fact that it's an oval shape, which I don't think we've done before, which kind of gives that oval office kind of feel to every scene uh, without it being the oval office. This is a uh, charts we made. For, uh, I made for the, uh, for the run crew, and every zone is colored on the stage, and every wall is numbered, so that each scene, they've got act one, uh, scene one, uh, they can look and see which number that wall goes. So say wall four, which is a door, lives in red zone in scene one, and then in another zone, it's gonna live, you know, it's gonna live somewhere else. It's gonna live in the green zone. So it's something to make it quick, because we're limited in time. Um, in fact, the first scene change is, you know, we're trying to do it in about 30 seconds. Um, that will be where the arch, where the door is. The most challenging thing is the amount of time we have to rehearse, um, particularly with the, the number of people who are involved in the production and trying to coordinate everybody's schedule. There are a lot of words in this play. I played a couple of leads uh, in the last several months and that's not usual for me. Leads have a much bigger workload. A lot more things to say, a lot more lines to, to learn. So that's the challenge. It's not something I, I hate, I mean I, I love it, but it's something that is still fairly new in my career. Um, I'm digging it, I'm having a blast, but it ain't easy. You know, a lot of lines you gotta learn. I love how, uh, how much dramaturgy and how much research we've had to put into the production because um, it is 
contemporary to 1945, and it's a comedy, and there are lots of jokes based on the current political figures in 1945 who we have no idea who they are today. So to do that research and to try and figure out why a joke was funny back in 1945, in fact, Lindsay and Krauss, uh, who wrote the play, the play ran much longer than anyone expected, and it ran through the 1948 election. They kept changing the jokes to keep it as up-to-date as possible in the three years that it was on Broadway. It's great that it's tying in right now with the election and what we have going on, and I think there's parts to this play that really it shows that politics are the same they were back in the 1940s in many ways as it is today. It's very cutthroat. There's a line in the play very early on where Grant Matthews says there's an economic crisis going on here at home. Well, that's, what, that's what's happening right now today. It's incredibly hard to get people to, to come see a show, especially a non-musical. When people come in, just based on that, our goal is to not just satisfy people who love coming to the theater, people who still value theater, but to entice into the theater people who have never been to this theater or who rarely go to, to the theater, don't consider it an option. When they are presented with this show, when they discover this show, this is a three-act play. This is from a time when an audience made a commitment to go to a Broadway show. Uh, we won't bore them. We will engage them. They'll be sucked into the world of the play. They will suspend their disbelief. They'll go beyond seeing a buddy of theirs, since the, you know, the majority of this cast is local uh, actors, local talent, um, but they won't just be coming to support their buddy and, yay, you didn't mess up, you didn't forget any of your lines. You know, at a certain moment, they will drop their, their disbelief and they will be brought into the world of the show. They will commit to caring if Grant and Mary get back together, if Grant becomes president or not, if the party boss gets his way and crushes Grant's idealism. Um, and the audience will be surprised that they not only care about those conflicts, but they'll be delighted by the outcomes. I love, I love doing a uh, drawing room comedy because that's really what it feels like. You know, people are just really sitting around and talking. It really is like a 1946 West Wing style. And um, to be able to do a play with 14 actors on stage in fancy dress getting drunk is a lot of fun.